Welcome to another edition of Likeable Leaders. This is a very, very special edition of Likeable Leaders because I have, well, it's for two reasons. Uh, first of all, I have a friend on, one of my clubhouse friends. And uh, second of all, um, uh, it is one of the, the series of interviews that I'm doing with speakers at the upcoming Listening and Beyond Summit. If you are listening on Clubhouse, awesome. If you are watching on YouTube uh, or LinkedIn or Facebook Live, that is cool too. And if you are watching live, uh, you have a chance to win a copy of Susie's book. Susie, I didn't tell you that I was giving away your book, but I am. Uh, the only way to win a copy of Susie Miller's book is to um, post a comment uh, on uh, LinkedIn uh, or uh, Facebook or YouTube. And I will choose one person who comments there to win a copy of the book. Um, where was I? I was going to introduce our guest, Miss Susie Miller. So without further ado, Susie, actually with some further ado, because I have way too many things open on my laptop. Sorry about that, friends. Um, <laughs> without further ado, um, Susie Miller is a speaker an author and a coach committed to helping high performers thrive in the relationships that matter most. I, I, am, I, am, I am most excited to talk to Susie because I think like her, I believe that relationships matter most in business and in life. Uh, she's the author of Listen, Learn, Love, How to Dramatically Improve Your Relationships in 30 Days or Less. That's the book that you can win by commenting. She's also um, written for or been featured in publications like Forbes, the Huffington Post, The Good Man Project. Um, she's appeared on Capitol Hill and NPR. She hosts the podcast Thrive in Relationships. Um, and uh, perhaps most important, <laughs> uh, she and her husband, John, have been married for 37 years. They have three adult children and an adorable grandson. Um, and perhaps second most important, she is a speaker at the upcoming Listening and Beyond Summit in New York City. July 29th and 30th. Welcome to Likeable Leader, Susie Miller. How are you doing today, Susie? I am great. No, I'm mute on both places. Can you hear me both places? Okay. Awesome. Okay. I'm great. And what's really funny is I sent that bio to you and we've now crossed 38 years uh, just uh, a week ago. So that's kind of fun. And I'm so excited to be here and talk about the things that I think are foundational to our happiness and success in life, which is communication, self-leadership, and relationships. And so one of the things drew me to you was the whole idea of being likable. So I'm very excited to finally get to talk with you, Dave. This is great. Indeed, it is a lot of fun. So let's so talk to me about um, what's important in relationships. Um, in business, Let, let's start with business. Um, you know, I think like you, um, I believe that uh, relationships are of, of the utmost importance. How, what, what are the two or three most important aspects of a successful professional relationship with a business partner uh, or, and or an employee, uh, you know, high level leadership employee? What, what, what can listeners um, grab hold of as the most important aspects of making a successful professional relationship work? Oh, I love that question. I love, I love that. that. Oh, I love that question. Okay. So, uh, especially because that's really the part, <clears throat> excuse me, of my business that I'm building out this new vertical that's kind of been hidden and underneath and all referral based. I'm now bringing into the light, which is all of this idea of business relationships and what needs to happen for those to really be excellent. I have a, a framework that I talk about good leaders can become great leaders through the framework of relational leadership. And so two of the principles that I'm going to highlight are one communication. And that's a big word. I understand that. But why I start there is because like drivers, most of us think we're good drivers and not all of us are good drivers. We can get from point A to point B, but some people are really good driving. They're aware of all the things that are going on. I am not a good, great driver. I am, my husband will say he'll test to, does my, you know, she gets from point A to point D, B, but that's often very lucky, right? So communication is similar. We don't usually assess our communication skills until we realize they aren't going well. Can we tell a team our CEO, um, executive suite, 
our, our investors, uh, can we communicate a message? Yes. But do we always communicate it well, effectively, and have it heard um, and received what we want, what they what we meant them to hear? That requires communication skills. So there are skills like every other um, tool that is going to help you actually excel. Everybody drives. Once they get a driver's license, they can drive. Not everybody drives well. So I use the same thing. Everybody communicates. Very few people communicate well and actually connect. So I provide a lot of tools on how to do that well. And one of the things that I will give you before I move on to my second point for everybody today is a tool to absolutely improve your communication immediately. When somebody shares something with you, before you move on, so when people talk, usually we're thinking about what we want to say in response. And what I teach is pause and pay attention. Stop thinking about what you want to say in response and really listen. Use these three magic words that make every relationship better is tell me more. So a boss comes in and gives you a you know 30 second rundown of what he wants. Pause and really listen before you ask the question, go tell me more. And that will cause them to stop and make sure they've communicated what they actually want you to hear. So if it's a, it's those three words are so magical because if you pause with me for a minute and think, when was the last time somebody said, tell me more, unless they were an interview. So that is a tip. If you practice it today, please, please, please DM me, pigeon, you know, car carrier me, sh shoot up a flare. Let me know how it worked because I love hearing stories of instant success. And there's not a lot of places we can have instant success, but this is one place where you will have instant success. So the first is better communication skills. The second, and I would say essential that's missing in most business relationships is the ability to talk about the hard things. In my bio on Clubhouse for a long time, the first line was conflict can be good. Um, and, and I'm not talking about bad conflict. I'm talking about healthy conflict. Most of us avoid talking about the hard things. And so our relationships, is, our business communications are just peppered seasoned with misunderstandings and they kind of we we bump over them we ignore them we you know take a different way around them until again they blow up one of the things i do dave is uh, that one degree between when water boils from simmering to boil where it can be steam and move a train i parachute in in that one degree and make sure things don't blow up if you don't learn to talk about the hard things with confidence and competence, your business relationships will suffer from your partnerships and JV to your C-suite all the way down the line to the people who you are asking to help support the vision of your business. So those are my two big uh, tips in this, in answer to your question. Well, I love that Susie. And what else could I possibly say, but tell me more. Seriously, no, tell me more about specifically about um, uh, relationships that are both business relationships and personal relationships, right? I'm, 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 I'm coming off of a 14 year uh, business partnership with my wife uh, that actually just ended the business partnership part as we sold the company and the, the marriage continues. But boy, oh boy, I'm asked all the time how we made that work. And I would love to know from you what uh, couples who are in business together can do. Well, I would love to tell you more on this because my husband and I also work together. Um, I did not know the entrepreneurial business mindset when I married him a gazillion years ago. Um, and my family was not like that. My dad was a doctor, a very professional, top medical school. And I married into this entrepreneurial world where risk is the bottom line. Risk, a calculated wise risk, but entrepreneurs you know, live on a tightrope wire and they love it and they're thrilled by it. And usually their partner and the person they're attracted the two is less so, you know, and so you have all these different personalities. So one of the things I would say, I'm going to say again, I'm on, the, I'm a, on two things today. I'm going to say two things. One, understand your wiring. If you understand your identity and your wiring and your partner's identity and wiring, I have found that takes about a third of the fights arguments off the table because you know where you're coming from. You know where they're coming from. You know a tone or a tendency and you can just put it in the that's, that's how they're wired. So that's a really important foundational step I work with with all my couples and clients. And I work with power couples in a VIP coaching realm um, by referral only because I've been one, I've done it and I've worked with some really um, high level couples who have to navigate this. Congratulations on making it 14 years and having a marriage intact. I love that, that, that you're an example of that. The other thing I think that's so important is priorities. So personality and priorities. You've got to have your priorities straight where you actually take off your hats. You take off your business hats and you have time in your schedule when you 
are just us as a couple. It can't be us through and through all the time because there's times when tension in a business doesn't need to bleed over into your, your dinner. You can put a period there. You can say, we're going to pick this up tomorrow in the meeting, but we're going to be us as a couple or as a family tonight. And you have to be able to switch those hats. And you do that through the priority of time and the, the part you play in that, in that moment. So when I'm home and I ran a business and my husband, we ran it together. When we had teenagers at home, our kids are all grown now. We literally, I had this visual of take off my hat as I got back into my um, environment of being mom and wife and hang out with the kids. And if something came up, because here's what couples do is they talk about business all the time. I mean, we are obsessed, addicted to our business. Ideas come, all that kind of stuff. We would have to pause and go time out. Sorry, let me rewind, write it down come back to the present moment. So personalities, priorities, and being present in the moment is the only way I have found that works. But in true communicator form, I would love for you, Dave, to tell me more about how you and your wife have done that well, because I'm sure there's a tip I have not come up with that I can learn from you. Well, look at that. Uh, you flipping the script on me. The interviewer gets interviewed. Um, I mean, for us, it's, it's really been about uh, setting uh, boundaries and, and really being very specific around roles and responsibilities and, um, and areas of focus. Um, and to your point about communication, just lots of it, never too much, uh, lots of different forms, lots of different channels, lots of communication, lots of love, and, 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 um, and clearly defined boundaries. That, that, that's been what's most important for us. If you are just joining me, we are live. It's a great treat. We are live on Clubhouse, live on LinkedIn, live on Facebook, and live on YouTube. I, there are very, very few folks that try to do this four-way live streaming because it's very, very difficult technologically to do it, but we pulled it off. So thank you to the Apprentice team for supporting us, uh, uh, Francesca and the Apprentice team. And thank you, Susie, for your patience uh, today as we as we set up for this live interview. And if you're only listening, well, you should be watching. And if you're only watching, well, you should be listening on Clubhouse. Uh, we're gonna give away um, a copy of Susie Miller's book. And on that note, I would, I would love to know a little more. So Susie, you wrote, listen, learn, love, how to dramatically improve your relationships in 30 days or less. That's a, that's a bold promise. That's a bold promise. So talk to me a little bit about, um, a couple of the things that readers will get when they read this book. It's a great question, Dave. And I looked to the side of my bookcase. You would think I would have my book right here, but we just moved to a new location. We live in a tiny house on the road full time and my books are still in the box because we just arrived and I'm like, oh, so um, I could hold it up and and be really professional, but you know what? Sometimes we just go with it. So listen, learn, love. It is a big promise. And when my editor came up with, or publisher came up with the title, I had to really pause and, and think through, do I deliver on that promise? And it was a great exercise to look back at what clients and um, companies have told me in the past. Um, and yes, I deliver on that promise. And so what they'll get in the book are some really actionable techniques, actionable tips and tools, because so often we read something. And if you follow me on Clubhouse at all, you know this about me as well. I always give something actionable because inspiration and information is nothing without implementation. And so for me, I always want to say, here's what I can implement. One of the tools in the book is the pause and pay attention tool, where Again, if you start doing that, um, you will see that you actually understand so much more of what's going on. And I want you to catch yourself because all of us are guilty of this. We are already thinking of our answer and what we want to say when somebody's speaking to us versus literally pausing and being fully present, look in their face, look in their eyes. You know, my husband laughs at me because I look at my phone when I'm on Clubhouse and I look at the people's faces. He's like, it's an audio app. What are you doing? <laughs> um, and really be present to pause and pay attention, being present to the moment to understand what the other person is communicating. And so that is a tip when we talk through each of these skills, listen, learn, love. And again, people have been like, oh, you know, I know how to listen, I know how to love. The learn is the really big hook because most of us don't think about how much we really don't know about our people. And the book um, goes through uh, romantic relationships, kids, family, uh, colleagues. I include examples of all of those in the book because I feel like as what I found was no matter where I started with a client or a company contract, I 
I always had to go back to these found foundational principles and it gave people an entryway into, you know, my offerings. And so I was like, rather than just keep doing the seminar, I'm like, here's the book. So learn them is a second tool. And what you'll get in the book with that, that's so interesting to me is, do you really know your people? Not just how they like their coffee. Cause if you know how they like their coffee, that's great. But you know, one of the things I've learned about Dave is he likes fun. He likes music. He likes fun. He, you know, peppers things up with, with songs when we do clubhouse rooms. And so by paying attention to you, Dave, I've learned some things about you. And so preparing for the interview, I knew that it would have this element of kind of fun and easygoing. And that prepared me to show up with the best personality to serve your audience. Cause I'm, my guess is you draw a lot of people who are fun. And so when we learn people, we actually connect at a deeper level and most people don't take the time to do that. So listen, learn, love really does deliver on its promise. When you use the skills in it, you will see dramatic results very quickly. Now it won't fix everything. There's some long-term growth for that, but it will get you started. And, you know, whenever you get started well, you are more likely to finish strong. Love it. Thank you, Susie. And I um, have a couple more questions and then I'm going to see how, uh, see if any of our audience has questions on a LinkedIn. Francesca, our apprentice is checking LinkedIn and YouTube and Facebook for uh, questions as well as people commenting, everyone, every comment is an opportunity to win Susie's book, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And um, you mentioned personality a moment ago, and I know that from your uh, LinkedIn profile, actually, Susie, that you are a, a DISC uh, certified. And so I would love your feedback. I'm a very, very big fan of the Enneagram. Of course, there's DISC and Enneagram and Myers-Briggs. Uh, do you have a particular favorite uh, personality assessment model or system, strength finders? There, there are many out there. Do you have a favorite and, and, and why? I'm a fan of, of many of them, strength finders. I was a Myers-Briggs tester for a while. Um, the DISC is what I chose to get certified in uh, a while back because it's very simple. Again, quick action steps, quick understanding. It's very digestible. Uh, but I am a huge fan of the Enneagram and I'm moving, I'm moving into getting some certification there so I can actually do that as well. The Enneagram is huge, but I pick, pick the DISC as an entry-level place because it's very simple to comprehend, but very effective at understanding behavior. Because a lot of times when we end up with communication, leadership, people skill issues, we start with behavior. And so for me, one of the things I have found is if I go in, I trained at AOL on this, they were merging a bunch of companies in there. I went to their location outside DC and people needed a quick way to connect, to understand, to begin to build team collaboration and productivity. And so I did the disc and, and I did it in a very, um, fun, entertaining workshop. And people, one of the biggest comments I got as people came out was I didn't realize that's why they did or said what they did or said. And as soon as you break down that barrier, you now can connect at a deeper level. You can move into other personality tests, other ways of understanding people. But I picked the disc because it's the easiest, quickest point of access. It's, it's easy digestible. It's kind of like when you go to, you know, steak, hamburger, or lobster, what do you want? You know, it's very simple to not simple Simple is not always easy, but simple to understand and use and put into implementation really quickly. I spoke at an event where I trained on it at a business conference, and it was really funny. The next day, they were talking to each other like, oh, that's your that's your I coming out. That's your, you know, your C coming out. And I get that. And it began to break down barriers. And so I picked that. But you did have me at Enneagram. I love the Enneagram. What are you on the Enneagram? I have my guess, but I want you to tell me what you are. Well, that's not fair. You have to guess first what my Enneagram is, Susie. Yes, I am a, I am a three. I am a very, I've caught, I'm such a three that I'm a very, very high three on the raw score. I'm off the charts. Nine, uh, uh, the, the test, the, the maximum score you can get of the that, that my preferred test that uh, uh, Mario Sakura uh, and um, Brad Kirstensteiner developed uh, is a uh, hundred and I got a 98 raw score on the three. I'm, I'm like a very, very high three. So big fan of the Enneagram. I got to take my disc. Um, I got to take my disc assessment. I took it years ago, but it's been a while. So I couldn't tell you what my, what my disc assessment is. Uh, what's your Enneagram, Susie? My Enneagram is an eight with a seven wing. So um, that's not an easy, eights are not an easy thing for a woman to be. We had an eight Enneagram women's club 
but they're very direct. They're very, they're, they, they are reformers. They go after things. And seven is the fun part of me. And I tell people how I jumped off a cliff. So um, I'm an eight with a seven wing. And I was between a three and an eight. And it wasn't until I was in a course that somebody who was an expert said, oh no, the driver in you is, is an eight driver. So, and on the disc, I'm guessing that your eye is pretty high, which is the fun part of you. And I'm guessing you probably have a high D, which is the directive. Let's just get it done. Come on, people. Um, and so that would be my guess. And, and the thing with personalities, it's fun. And I want to say this because so many people resist being put in a box. And I want to make this disclaimer for people with like with everything. It's just a tool. It's just a tool. When I um, when you go into a foreign country and you know the basic languages of how to get to the bus stop in the restroom and order water, that's a tool. You're not going to be, you know, you're not put in a box. I think the thing with personality types or assessments of any kind, people go, uh, uh, uh you're not going to characterize me. And what I tell people is it is a tool to get common language and common understanding because why we are all as unique as our voice and our fingerprint, we have some commonalities. And when we can understand commonalities, then we can move forward and beyond them. And so that kind of breaks down that barrier of don't box me in, which a lot of people don't prefer with, and that's the pushback on personality tests. I'm gonna invite you to embrace it and just see, you know, see what fits and see how it helps you communicate, connect, and, and really collaborate with other people. Because like when I put up my finger and said, Dave's a three, immediately I know some things about him. And that's not to presume, but that's to go, okay, now we can move past the, 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 the warm, you know, the, you're so cute, you know, the cocktail chatter and get into, okay, you're driven, you like success, you like fun. And so I think personality tests can be a very effective tool for better relationships. Yeah, by the way, first of all, I knew you were an eight because only an eight during an interview turns around and starts interviewing the person because eights, eights are have power and control as their thing. And I don't know if you heard my, my uh, speaking of eights uh, being interviewed, my clubhouse interview of Kat Cole, but Kat Cole is 100% an eight. And she was she was completely in control of that interview, despite the fact that I I was an interviewer. Um, I have just one more question, Susie, uh, and um, and then I'm going to open up to questions from our audience on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Clubhouse. Um, Susie uh, Miller, the uh, speaker, author, and coach, the author of Listen, Learn, Love: How to Dramatically Improve Your Relationships in 30 Days or Less. Um, and a speaker, you mentioned a recent speaking gig that you did. Susie is also a speaker at the upcoming Listening and Beyond Summit in NYC, July 29th and 30th. I am very excited to offer all of our viewers a uh, code. They can use Susie's uh, speaker discount code of Susie 10 and that's S-U-S-I-E-10, over at our website, which is labsummit.club, L-A-B-S-U-M-M-I-T, Dot club labsummit.club learn more about this amazing marketing conference that we're planning um and uh and get a discount from from Susie but my question Susie is give us a sneak peek of what you'll be talking about at the listening and beyond summit um you don't have to tell us the whole speech but just give us a sneak peek of a couple of takeaways that folks can expect to get from you at the upcoming conference Oh my gosh, I was just working on this last week. Again, I'm so excited because my topic is great leaders create win-win situations. Um, and so what we're going to talk about is talking about the hard things. When I, in my, you know, 30, 25 years of doing this, people avoid the hard things. Conflict is a bad word. And I really am out to redeem the word conflict because conflict just means to strike together. It produces heat, electricity, creativity. It was Steve Jobs' muse. You know, how would you like to be compared to Steve Jobs? So we're going to talk about the power, the positive power of conflict, how to actually harness it for your benefit. And then we're going to look, of course, about conflict styles. You know, what do you do? Most people have, a, have one of three or four styles. And then really how as a leader of yourself, your home, your family, your business, your marketing department, you get to use conflict for good. You know, I'm gonna, maybe I'll wear my superhero cape, conflict for good, you know, because I feel like we shy away from it. And I really do believe, um, here's a statistic for everybody that'll stop your tracks. It costs the US companies, companies in the United States, $359 billion, B, billion dollars in lost revenue and productivity because of conflict avoidance. So I'm like on a mission. We're going to talk about how to take those hard things and master them and move forward so that you can get beyond the things and the roadblocks. So I can't wait to talk about it and be there with y'all. 
I absolutely love it. I'm chuckling, Susie, because again, um, with my Enneagram filter on, Enneagram lovers will appreciate the fact that only an eight or a seven would um, embrace conflict with such open arms, or dare I say an eight wing seven. You know, my daughter is, uh, my oldest daughter is an eight, and every day at the dinner table, we have a little conflict, but it's okay. We work through it, and uh, we learn uh, We learn and grow together. Um, we have a couple of uh, questions from well, our audience. So, can, I, um, can I just say one thing? What's so funny about that is, my family will say, and this is why I really had to do the research on it and why it's not, you know, it's no love conflict. We just want to have it out. You know, let's have it out. But the cost of not talking about things gives you ulcers, gives you high blood pressure, loses money for your business. So I just think it's so funny. I've never had anybody point that out to me before, Dave. So I'm totally caught off guard by that. That's awesome. And tell your daughter, I'm already a fan. <laughs> And uh, to be clear, I am not saying that eights necessarily love conflict, but eights definitely embrace conflict better than any other Enneagram type. So um, we have questions. Um, one person, uh, Imelda, is asking about what the Enneagram is, and Diane is asking about what DISC is. And rather than uh, ask Susie to go too deep into either, I will say that I will post links, my favorite links. And Susie, I'll invite you uh, in the LinkedIn thread to post your favorite links to Enneagram and DISC respectively, but they are two of the more popular personality assessment uh, uh, models that are um, that are out there. Um, we do have a question, a very specific question about a relationship. So I'm going to repeat this one word for word for you, Susie. Um, it comes from somebody named Omoye, and he says, I run a media company with my brother in Nigeria, but we fight over most things. I feel he's doing so much and I am doing less because I have another job that takes most of my time. How can I balance my work relationship with my brother without having to quarrel over duties that need to be carried out by both of us in our business? Whew, well, that's a tough one. What do you say to that, that situation, Susie? That's a big, big, big question. I'm going to pick one piece of it. Um, if you want to know more about the disc, and, and I want to go back to this, just DM me disc and I'll, you know, may, I do some assessments, but that's a big question. So let me take one or two pieces or we'll be here for, you know, a little while. Um, I would say the very first thing you need to do is you need to identify and name one of my big proponents is name what's happening. So go to your brother and say, you know, I'm aware that with my job, I only have four hours per week, or let's say two hours per evening to work on the business. And you're working six hours on the business. So there's a discrepancy there in our input. Name the conflict, name the tension. When you name the tension, you lower the, the temperature. Okay. And suddenly it's like, okay, at least you're aware that there's a problem here. So when you name that with your brother, he can nod and you can nod and go, okay, I realize there's a discrepancy there. That's not a discrepancy of passion or purpose or desire to be involved. That's a discrepancy of time commitment. And as a result, you know, we can say you might have more say in these areas because you put more time into these areas. And when you delineate those um, responsibilities, then it doesn't, then let's say that comes up, then I'm going to try to make this up. Let's say with media, he does more, spends more time assessing client uh, videos and, and has a plan for how to deal with it. You come in here two hours and you give your feedback and it might be, wait, you just spent 15 minutes on this. I spent an hour on this. And as a result, I get three quarters more vote. And you literally map it out that way because you've named the differential. And when you do that, you can then go, okay, well, in this place, unless I really am passionate about that graphics terrible or that PR move is not good, I'm going to defer because you have put more time in it. The problem happens is when you have different time and different expertises that you then butt heads on things that really you need to let go of. And that's really hard when you want to be involved in everything. So that's one thing. And, and in that vein, the second piece of advice I'd give you is really um, write down and get really clear about responsibilities, roles, and decision-making purview. I have responsibility, final say, 51% vote over here, and we're not going to quarrel about it. If we get to a place, and there's, there's an old adage, and I just did a training on this a couple months back, of agree to disagree. And I have changed that to, and, and I learned this, and I'm forgetting the source, but disagree and commit. When you agree to disagree, there's this rumbling underneath that you kind of really aren't all on board. But if you say to your brother, okay, once we disagree, you hear my point, we make a decision, we're gonna to commit to go your way. You let it go and you move forward. You've committed to the plan you've made together because of the position you've given him. So that's a, 
you know, beginning answer to what you're asking. I think it's applicable to anybody in any situation that has difficulties like that. Um, but always begin with naming the tension because it lowers the temperature and then really get very distinct about the roles and responsibilities and, you know, the weightedness of each person's voice in a given situation and then take them piece by piece by piece. Love it. Thank you, Susie. Uh, Susie Miller, uh, author, uh, coach, consultant, speaker, and speaker specifically at the upcoming Listening and Beyond Summit with me in New York City, July 29th and 30th. Before we wrap up, Susie, and give away a copy of uh, your book, um, I'm going to give one more chance to question specifically to our Clubhouse friends. So if anyone on the stage uh, has a question, feel free to flash your mic. If anyone is in the audience has a question, feel free to raise your hand on Clubhouse. And um, while we do that, I just want to say, Thank you again uh, for joining me today. It's been a great pleasure talking with you. And boy, am I excited to see you in person in New York City and to listen. You know, I, I, I um, this is going to sound arrogant, so I apologize in advance. There are very, very few speakers that I like sitting in an audience for. I'm uh, as a three, I, I always prefer to be on the stage, <laughs> and um, I, I at least I know you know what my limitations are, and it's hard for me to sit in the audience. But I will absolutely be sitting in the audience to learn from you about uh, better em embracing uh, a, a conflict and uh, in, in, in relationships. Um, and so I thank you for that. Not seeing any other questions, I'm gonna give away our grand prize uh, right now. Uh, the winner of Listen, Learn, Love, How to Dramatically Improve Your Relationships in 30 Days or Less from Susie Miller is... Diana Miranda, Diana Miranda, congratulations. Thank you so much for uh, commenting and uh, send me a direct message with your address and I will get out a copy of uh, Susie's book uh, to you. Uh, Susie Miller, thank you again for joining me and I can't wait to see you in New York City. Thank you, Dave, so much for having me. Thanks for the great questions. I expected no less uh, from you because you get you great interviews. I'm honored by your comment because as a keynote around the world speaker, um, you uh, will grace me with the presence at that event. I'm so excited that you get to be there. You just kind of upped the ante a bit, but I really received that compliment and thank you for that. Thank you for a great interview. Thank you for honoring me with being able to be a speaker at the summit. And folks, let me just say this. If you want to take your business to the next level, if you want to move with some people who really are on the path that you want to be on, come to New York City, hang out with us, have dinner, have meals, have snacks, listen, uh, participate. It is going to be life-changing. If you've been and around Dave at any, for any bit of time, it's going to be fun. And for me, if a conference is fun and life-changing, I'm all for it. So thank you so much for having me. Love being here with you in the audience. And I'm, you know, of course, we'll see you around this, the clubhouse hallways. Thank you again, Susie Miller. Uh, thank you to Francesca and our apprentice team, uh, our producers on the other side of the glass. And thanks most of all, as always, to you, our viewers and listeners, for making this happen. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing or hearing you soon. Bye for now. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Susie. Thanks, guys. This was fun.